hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm going to be giving you part two of what if naruto was reborn in a new world with rimaru abilities remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends in social media platform and also guys don't forget to go ahead and check out the other channels if you're new i indeed have four channels which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead, check them out, and yeah, enjoy. And don't forget to go ahead and turn on the bell notification to see exactly when I post because I do post every day on them, guys. And also, I post a new series over an anime symbol. Link will be at the top of the description. What if Naruto was the king of the curses? Sukuna, so go ahead and enjoy that, guys. So without further ado or waste no more time, let's begin now guys. So the last part we left off, Naruto was dying, yes he was, things weren't looking so good for him in the slightest, his body had reached its limit, he had fought Sasuke and they came to a stalemate, the last attack ended up wounding them far worse than any of them could ever imagine, Sasuke was no longer breathing as Naruto was left, he was failing, Sakura was trying her hardest as she pumped her chakra. She tried to heal him as best as she could. However, she was failing. She was frustrated as she tried. She cried. She didn't want him to go. As Naruto went into his mindscape, as he spoke with Kurama, the both of them knowing that they weren't going to make it. At least, they would die together. Something strange was going on though. As the both of them could hear a strange voice, they were not sure what it was, but it did not matter anymore, as they were going to die very soon. Soon after that, as everything went dark, Naruto found himself somewhere else. He didn't quite understand what was going on, but he was somehow alive. As he took in his surroundings, he was a baby. However, he was a weird green ugly baby. He was a goblin. Now that was rather surprising. Some time passed as Naruto found out. A lot. He was born with many goblins but unlike others these goblins were... Well they didn't have compassion for anything or anyone but themselves. They have no sense of loyalty. And Naruto was not that kind of person so he stayed away from them. As they had tried to attack him for his food. More time passed as Naruto learned how to become a ninja once again, as he kept on improving his skills. Kurama was still with him but Kurama was now a force in his head. That told him when he awakened new abilities and when he acquired new weapons. They were no longer in the elemental nation, they were somewhere different. Upon returning back one day, orcs were killing off all the goblins. Naruto had no connection with them so... Well, he didn't really feel anything. However, the problem now was him finally realizing that he was no longer a human. And he had to do what he had to do. So he went gruesome and bloody in order to take down the orcs. And that made him stronger. The weak die and the strong survive. As Naruto fed and improved his strength and skills. Becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. He decided to leave after that. As he was exploring, he came across a goblin like himself. However, she was really beautiful. It was a bit shocking. As Naruto saw that she was about to be attacked, but he stopped the horned rabbit from attacking her. She told him that she was one of the weaker ones. As she wanted to feed, so she came out here. 
Her partner had run away when they saw. The horned rabbit saw she was alone and afraid. As Naruto tend her leg, she asked if she could come with him. As she introduced herself as me, as Naruto was surprised, that she would just pack up and come with him. Well, it was good to have company, and he would help her get stronger as well, as they explore. Some time passed after that as we find Naruto and Mei hunting, as she was getting good. She had leveled up quite a bit, and Naruto had also leveled up. It was only a matter of time now before he evolved into something greater. Naruto had no idea where they were as he spoke to Krama. He had to take in his surroundings for Krama to explain what the things were. It wasn't long after that that they found the place where they were heading, so they made their way off. We then skipped towards the capital palace. The current king was talking to two of his advisors. There was a new hero that was rising. As the current king was not going to let him marry his daughter like what he did when he became king. However, there was another king of a different empire who didn't like any of them. And he wanted to control all of them. There has been an uprising monsters lately as they believe that he was the one behind it. They had to man their stations and gather their forces because things are not looking so well in the slightest. They had to be prepared for whatever he had to throw at them. They were unaware about the interference of the new goblin that was going to become one of the strongest ever walk this plane of existence. As that was none other than Ruto. So yeah guys, the base colors we left off you guys came. Switch across the place, check it out for yourself. Don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs of the other channels. Yes, I need a four of them which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and smash that red subscribe button and become a part of the end making family. And thank you for all of your help and support. So without further ado or wasting more time, what do you say we jump right into this brand new episode begin now guys? The king was waiting for the sounds of their footsteps to finally leave. Once he could no longer hear them, he made his way and he locked the door. He then stepped towards the window before he pushed it open. He held his hand out. There was a ruby ring on it. The sun then reflected on it, generating a light. Barely a second later, over the horizon flying rapidly, something entered into the office and landed on one of the chairs. Sorry for the abrupt call my friend, but I need a favor so please help me. King Leone said as he closed the window and pushed the curtains up. I need help as well Leonis. The crow said before it burst into smoke. Its body then started to reform into a gigantic skeleton figure. With a black cloak with golden edges. He had a red glow inside of his empty eye sockets. And a halo like object glimmering behind his head. What happened Ainz? The king asks. To answer. The living skeleton did something that should be impossible. Streams of water start to pool from his eye sockets. In a comical way. As he grabbed onto the king. Albedo ran away. Again. Ainz Ulgaun. The true demon king yelled as he cried out his eyes. Albedo? Your daughter? The king asked confused. No, my goldfish. Of course I mean my daughter, you old fart. The skeleton roared in answer. I told you that you are pampering her too much. But you did not listen. Leonis said as he pushed away. The demon king hands. It's all her mother's fault. I always told her. Momonga. Maybe we should rein in little Abido a bit more. And she always answer as part succubus. She would be a free spirit no matter what. Eins answered as he collapsed back in the chair in defeat. Ah yes, Leonis said. Momonga, the succubus queen. Leonis remember her quite well. He was a righteous man that loved his wife down to his very soul. But even he, the past hero. And the chosen one once or twice had certain dreams about the woman with her beauty and her curves that would occupy the mind of every man that gazed upon her and that was even without her switching on her succubus aura as you remember quite well flashback back in the day when king leonis was still hero leonis he and his party was on the road to find and defeat the demon king they had stayed at an inn so they could restock and get ready for the final battle. 
That very night he heard a young girl crying out and he went to go and investigate. As he arrived to see a small girl that he believed to be a 10 year old human crying out for her father to save her. So being the good boy that he was he decided to step towards her and try to save her. Only for him to see two very small black feathery wings forming from her waist. Two horns on her forehead and her eyes golden with slits. At that he heard a growl. He spun around to come face to face with the demon king in person. He had grabbed his blade. With both hands Leonis charged. Only for the demon king to sidestep him and step towards a girl. And start to hug her and tell her that everything was going to be alright. Leonis was rather shocked. Of all things he never expected this in the slightest. That is when an angelic voice had called out to all of them. There you are, the woman had said jokingly. Mom! Little Albedo cried out in happiness. What, Ma? Leonis was cut off as his eyes focused on her chest area. As the moonlight seemed to shine down upon them, giving them this spectacular view. Barely covered by a creamy tight dress that was strained to its very limits. There was nothing that was left to the imagination. To this day, King Leonis was ashamed to admit that he had no idea what her face looked like. Well, cut him some slack. He was a youngster. He couldn't stop staring. I want to bury my face between them. That was all he was able to think during that interaction. What are you looking at, pervert? Einz had screeched at him. Bo boobies. I mean, who are you? said Leonis. As he pointed his sword towards the demon king. What followed had been... A bit of a surreal experience, to say at least. Apparently Ainz, right hand man, Asgard, had been pressing towards the annihilation of the other races to make room for the demons to inhabit the forbidden mountains and expand their territory. And since Ainz did not want to bring on the wrath of the others that already saw them as monsters and was just waiting for a chance to go to war, he refused. The result had been Ainz, forced to pack his stuff and take his wife, his daughter, and a dozen monsters that were still loyal to him, to the holiday resort that had been built for his family. Asgard was the one that was leading the other demons against the humans and the other races. So the demon king Ainz and Leonis made a deal at that moment to infiltrate the cursed castle. Leonis would have slayed Asgard making everyone think that he was a demon king and he was finally dead so that Ainz and his followers, the loyal ones, could live in peace in the mountains without anyone bothering them. It was a pity that Asgard, as his quest to become the true demon king, bond his life to the castle and the monsters that were following him in order to increase his power. So upon his death, the castle, the army, everything crumbled making a lie that the demon king was defeated. It's okay. I had been forced to become a demon king after evolving so I am happy to retire. The castle? I never liked that place in a way. It was so humid. You have no idea how much my bones hurt every morning. That was the only comment the skeleton made while shrugging it off. So now years later, Leonis became king. Once he married the princess. And he also had a deep friendship with the former Demon King. Only he knew he was a real Demon King. The both of their daughters were best friends. And they play babysit for each other whenever one of them were not around. However, how a skeleton that was devoid of flesh and muscles could have a child with a succubus still escape Leonis to this day. The last time he tried to understand, he had a huge headache. End of flashback. You are still thinking about my wife boobs. Ainz accused Leonis as he narrowed his eyes. It's not my fault. I am only human. Leonis said in shame as he collapsed back on his chair. Tch. I came here to ask for help. And you're here lusting about my woman. That is not true. But listen. King Joseph is getting help from the elves. And the moon islands. To hunt down the colossal guardians. I need your help. Even I keep my distance away from them. This is very bad news. Okay. 
I will help you. I will have my demon spies keep their eyes open and inform you secretly. But in exchange, you need to help me find Albedo. That girl just can't go around without an escort. It's too dangerous. She'll be fine. You and your wife train her personally. I don't think there's anyone that can defeat her once she starts to fight. I would love to see you in my place. Would you be so calm if your daughter was the one to escape? I may still hold the Demon King title, but it never meant that every monster or demon on this planet is under my command. Otherwise, I would not be worried, said Heinz. Well, I don't have this problem. My sweet, innocent daughter would never do such a thing and break her poor daddy's heart. Leone said with a smug look. Damn lucky bastard. Your Highness! Your Highness! A fist pounded against the door. Waiting for Ainz to return back into a crow, he stepped to see a maid. What happened, he said. The princess. She escaped. The crow started to call in a very laughing manner as Ainz was laughing. As now the tables have turned. Ha! How did it happen, he said. We don't know. We just found this letter on her bed and most of her belongings are gone. The maid ended the letter that she was clutching against her chest towards the king. You must find her. Find her, he said. The poor woman ran away scared as the whole castle trembled. As a crow went into a fit of laughter. This is not funny, Ainz. He said slamming the door shut. It is for me. Cheer the anguish, brother. It will burn less, he said as he transformed back to normal. I would not laugh if I were you. Given this note, apparently, the both of them planned this. O what? I said. They decide to go incognito and live in an adventure together. Well, it's better then. Each of them would keep the other in line. And it would be much easier for your people or my spies to find them, I said. And what if... What if they do not say it, said Ainz. What if they meet boys, said Leonis, as Ainz scream. My albedo is too young for that. Don't worry, said the king. They will protect each other. They will scare any boys away that try to court them. Wait, what if they have feelings for the same person? Ainz said, freaking out, as the king started to understand the dilemma of what he just asked. We can't allow him to get anywhere close to our daughters. Yes, you're right. I call dibs in skinning him alive. They already started a plan. The individual's murder even though they had no idea who it is. And I'll personally choke him with his own spine. Decapitation. Neutering. Immolation. I will shove my hand so far up his ass that as the both of them went on, seeing all the cruel wicked things they would do, to any boy that come near their daughter. Meanwhile, ah, that's you. Bless you, Naruto, said me, as Naruto kept on sneezing over and over again. Thank you. Now this road should connect to various villages and hopefully to the capital, I think, said Naruto. Goblins! A human voice screamed out. Huh? Me said looking around. Um, hello, said Naruto as a convoy, as there was our own 10 soldiers with them, with a caravan. Y you you speak the human language. The red here female soldier at the front acts on surely. Yes, some of us can. Why? Shouldn't I be able to? Naruto asks back. Faking annoyance while acting as an interpreter for me at the same time. You have just eaten humans to relearn the language, but telling them that would be a very bad idea, Krama said. The red here woman spoke. Well, I thought, we believe that. A soldier cut her off. Aren't you goblins, supposed to be idiots? Retarded, he asks. That is very insulting and rude, you know. I didn't comment on you wearing smelly dirty clothes, and you call me an idiot instead. You are a bastard without manners, said Naruto. Hey! The man shouted. Let's go, Mei-chan, said Naruto. These are bullies. Let's just ignore them. Mei turned as she stick her tongue out at them, before she turned to follow her friend. Wait! 
as they turn back towards him. Aren't you supposed to attack us? And tried to kidnap me and the other girls for breeding? The red right here woman asks unsure. What? Pervert, said Naruto. Per pervert? You mean us? Another female soldier asks in disbelief. Yeah, you all see a goblin and immediately you start to have these fantasies. Don't come any closer, you sexual deviant. As he covers his private parts, May doing the same as well. No, we are not. I... That not what I mean. I... I don't have dirty fantasies about goblins. The red here said with a blush. But you have to admit it. That's the first thing that popped in your mind after you saw them. The old man inside the carriage said with a chuckle. It... That... That's not true, she said. Sure as the sky is blue, you two are the strangest pair of goblins I've ever seen before. The oldest soldier said as he lowered his weapon. Can we trust them? Another man, dressed in a samurai armor axe as he was still, pointing a bow towards Naruto. You harass me, and I am the threat. Who says that you others won't try anything with me? Or for the man of your group won't try to force himself on Mei Chan, said Naruto, crossing his arms. I'm married. I have my children back home waiting for me. The one with the bow yelled at Naruto. This never stopped others from trying to have a fear. Naruto said, Tch, Can I kill him, please? He asked, looking towards the others. Stop it, Shin. What do you want, Goblin? The leader of the convoy said. He was an old looking dwarf. Naruto, my name is Naruto, and this is me, said Naruto. Nice to meet you then. I am Olaf, strong arm. Pleased to meet you, Olaf san, said Naruto. I ask again, what do you want from us? The dwarf asks, with a more polite voice. Help, that is all. Help? Another adventurer said, in confusion. You may think that we're all the same, but. I happen to have a wish, and I need help to fulfill it. And what would that dream be? Olaf asks as he was honestly curious. Don't laugh, but I want to be the strongest mercenary ever. I can't be a hero since I'm a goblin, so I'm happy to reach the closest thing possible to it. So I decide to travel the world and become the strongest and most famous, said Naruto. What? Laughter could be heard after that. That's a first. I've traveled these lands for dozens of years and yet, I've never been this surprised before. You do know that it would mean not attacking your client, right? Olaf said after a long laugh. Of course. What do you think I am? An idiot? Compared to normal goblins, no, you certainly aren't. The bow user from before, Shin said, as he placed the bow down. So what do you need, the red-haired girl asks. Pretty much everything. I only know what my forests look like and how to hunt. And I don't think that would be enough to be a mercenary, said Naruto. Nope. That is really lacking in knowledge, my boy. Olaf said the shake of his head as he moved closer to the two. But I can see it in your eyes. You're being honest, he said. You sure we can trust them? Another girl asks. We still have not been ambushed, he and his friend has not attacked us, and he's been polite the entire time. I'm fairly open to trust my judgement and believe him. Just like there is bad humans, just like there is bad elves, just like there is bad dwarfs, there are also bad goblins. However, there is also good people, good elves, good dwarfs as well. So I think that good goblins can exist, Olaf said. Thank you, Olaf san said Naruto. As he bowed his head a bit, me behind him clumsily doing the same. So, you convince that little girl behind you to join you in this dream of yours. Another good goblin, this must be our lucky day. Come, in exchange for you helping us protect the man and woman in the carriage, we will teach you the things that you need to know and some extra lessons for Miss May in human language so you won't always have to need a translator. As Naruto told me what he said, as she bowed towards the man, she tried to say thank you but it came out mismatch. But he could hear it though. Almost there he said, but it's a good start. You know, those two look good together 
a civilian girl said, sneaking a peek at them. Girls. They find everything cute. A young kid said, rolling his eyes. So, we are close to a perfect place. To mount our camp for the night. If you want to earn your lessons, you better start helping soon. Olaf said, rubbing his hands together. I think so, May, said Naruto, as he was talking to her. If you think we can trust them, she said with a shrug. I'll protect you, don't worry, said Naruto. Thank you, she said. What followed was a fast-moving, vibrant of people, gathering wood for the fire. The youngsters and women preparing food for everyone. Oi, can humans eat horned rabbits, ruby vipers and fishes? Naruto asked as he and Mai return. Technically, yes. Olaf said before turning towards a girl with ruby eyes as she waved her staff as a circle appeared. Analyze. Yes, we can eat those, she said. Kurama then spoke. Analyze. Minor appraising ability that can be learned by high level, cleric, and sage classes. It shows limited information about the targets. Elemental weakness comprised. Can be used to detect poison and curses on objects or food. Still nothing compared to what I can do though, said Kurama with a smug tone in his voice. Did you check if I poisoned the food by chance, Naruto said, a bit offended. Just to reassure everyone else, sorry, Olaf said, raising both hands in a peaceful manner. Tch, meanie. The shinobi off as both goblins sat down around the campfire. Well done. The chef of the group asks. Rare, thank you. Okay, since we're all here now. Let us start with the basics. I am Dorin, the explorer. I travel with Olaf to perfect my studies of this world. And it's different kinds of magic. Are you ready for the lessons? A taller looking older man said as he sat in front of Naruto, who nodded as a worn out book opened in front of the two goblins, showing them a complex map of the earth and the two moons. The world we live in is called El Rune. And it is divided in two main continents and an archipelago, Dolphice, that is where we are right now, is the biggest, followed by Melphice, is the smallest one on the left, while on the right is the Hephaes archipelago. There is also a huge cluster of islands that is also called the Moon Islands. The strange armor that our friend Shin over there wear come from those islands because he's a native of those islands. However, over the years, gear from that land has spread all over, so it can be found in the other nations. It's a samurai armor. Why do they think it's strange to be found? Kurama asked in his head. Different culture maybe, Naruto thought. All clear? The man asks. Up until now, yes, Durin-san, said Naruto. You keep on using lunar honorifics. That is most curious. By the way, we are moving towards the capital of Devon's kingdom, named Serena City. It is the place where the king of Devon resides. Durin said as he placed his finger on the map where the city resides. And what is Devon? May asks, question that was translated by Naruto. Devon, along Nesteria and Raltalia, are the biggest kingdom of our continent. And they are also called the Three Great Crowns. Those superpowers keep this land in check by keeping balance of the minor kingdoms and their respective area of influence and stop them. And each other when needed, Devon to the west, Nesteria to the east, and Rolotalia to the south. It's just like the big five back home. Kanoha the sand, Kumo the stone and Kiri were always keeping the minor countries in check. By being the stronger ones, Kurama commented to Naruto. And what about the North? Naruto asks. In our case, the North is a cold land that is covered with mountains, where once stood the demon kingdom, now monsters, without a lord, still roam the streets, and a small amount of humans settled within the area, though only a few can be found in number. Nesteria is not any better. Internal conflicts and strikes. People trying to gain better power, doing whatever it takes. So, we'll need to go to Devon to become mercenaries, said Naruto. That would be your best option, but in your case, I suggest that you join a guild instead, the red-haired girl suggested. 
Agil, may axe. Agil is basically a group of warriors working together to take missions issued by the Gil Association, those being regulated by the royal family itself. So you won't have to fear clients skipping the payment once it is done. Olaf explained. And it will also make things much easier for you too to be officially registered into a gill. Since goblins are not fully trusted, it will be better for them to see and approach you guys once you're in a gill. But they will still be wary of us, said Naruto, with a sigh. That can't be help. Now go to sleep tomorrow. We will continue our lesson and start teaching. Miss me, human language basics, Olaf said. Okay, old man, said Naruto. Later that night, the shinobi could not sleep as he lay there. As May had decided to use his body as a hugging pillow. As he was glancing up towards the heavens, the twin moons of Elrune, Pelham and Polom. The legend said that they contained the two souls of the goddess of this world. Since the two children were not immortal like her. At their death, she created the two moons to contain their spirits so that her children could play tag like they did in their youth and endlessly chase each other in the sky, Kurama explained. At least they're having fun even now, said Naruto, as he finally fell asleep. In the dream realm, as soon as he went to sleep, Naruto found himself in the empty darkness, pitch black. He couldn't see anything. Where am I, he said. Ah, so we finally meet at last. A thunderous voice boomed. It was like storm clashing against storm. Who are you? said Naruto. The individual laughed a bit. It is still too soon for proper introductions, but I am here to ask you to help me all the same, the voice said. A gigantic silhouette with red eyes was in the background, but it was too far for him to see what it truly was. Help you. How? said Naruto in confusion. We had been forced to call you here because we're in need of your abilities. Your world is safe. As while unable to act directly here without waking up, we could still dispel the illusion there, trapping your people in your world. However, here, we can't do a thing to help this world, so we had to get you here through rebirth. Okay. Help in doing what exactly, said Naruto. Nothing too grievous. I just want you to eat this gem. There's an evil man hunting this and others similar to it down and we don't want him to get his hands on our treasure. That's all. The figure moved his hand towards his chest, retrieving an apple-sized ruby that was cut in all fashions. So that's it, said Naruto. He wasn't convinced that was all. I expected you to be a tiny bit more open to trust people. Naruto did not respond. Please, you won't absorb anything. It will just stay hidden inside of your heart, away from prying eyes. It's all about hiding it, no strange missions, I swear. It's just that my body stands out too much to keep it safe, the voice said. Oh, and, said Naruto, you're a stubborn bastard. What do you want in exchange? What exactly are you offering, said Naruto? One of my fangs to be turned into a weapon and a unique legendary grade and a great blessing from a friend of mine very forbidden magic and abilities that no one else has and also a very badass looking evolution comprise the entity said angrily deal said Naruto as he grabbed the gem and swallowed it his entire body was illuminated by red light good now for the painful part the entity winks here it is just look for the blacksmith known as Angus he will be able to create the weapon for it as a fang Twice bigger than Ruta's whole body. Drop right next to him. No swords though. I think I prefer a club. Maybe because I'm a goblin now. Whatever the entity said. As Naruto absorbed it. You've obtained. Mysterious. Divine Fang. Pleased to make affairs with you. Voice San said Naruto. The bag of holding that he had. Was able to store the Fang without much problems. The pleasure is mine. Tell me though, said Naruto, who was the other guy that you people call here to protect the gems? 
It was a man that was reincarnated into a slime. He too accepted a similar request from us to keep something safe from the hands of evil. So please help us. We only want you both to protect the objects that we've given to you, the entity said. The dream then started to fade away. Okay, don't worry. No one will get the stone that you gave me. I got it, said Naruto, as his body finally disappeared. Once he was gone, those two are unknowingly holding the keys that keep our world safe. Telling them would just put a bigger burden while they earn a new chance in a new life. Varadora preferred to be completely absorbed by his champion, but just my core being stored inside of mine will be more than enough. If those two humans manage not to be captured and killed before the hero complete his sacred mission, at least two of us will still be able to keep the seal working and resurrect the others once peace return. The entity thought as it slowly crumbled into dust. The next morning, the real world. Evolution achieve. You're a hog goblin now, the voice said. A small jingle rang in Ruta's head waking him up. What the? New job gain, leave Shinobi. Well I already knew I was one, thank you, said Naruto. Gain legendary great blessing, divine blessing from the supreme god of chaos. Achievement unlocked, he who transcended life, death and chaos. So I evolved into a hobgoblin. Hmm, cool. As Naruto looked toward his hands, they were more human looking although the claws were still there and his skin had turned grey, almost like a dusty silver. Huh, did you evolve then? Good for you. Olaf said turning the flat side of his battle axe to meet Naruto see's face. That's my face? More or less, the young man said. His face was pretty much his old human one, but with jet black hair. Showing his spiky hair as a human, deep blue eyes, and dull silver skin. Even his whisker marks were still there, although the fangs that jetted out from his lip and the horn on his head, those he could have lived without, and the jewel on his forehead had grown in size, it now looked like a third eye. That voice, it's hiding some details, you know, Kramer said with a sigh. Yeah, I thought so too. Those stones must be really important if they went through all the trouble of summoning two people from two different worlds just to keep them safe. So let's just wait and see what happens. But they could at least take in me here as a human and not a goblin, Ruta said. Well, beggars ain't choosers. We were going to die. But they make us reborn. And you can't cry about it now. Hey, should we look for that slime dude, Ruta asked. Probably. Even just hopefully he has been told more about this whole gem mess. And if he's also from another world, he may like to meet someone that he can relate with, Kramer said. Yeah, I think so as well. Happy? Olaf said. If I'm happy? Yeah, said Naruto. I bet you are. You even got taller, Olaf said. Although. What's wrong, said Naruto. The girls of the camp scream as they turn with a blush over their face to not look at him. You should cover yourself. You outgrew your loincloth. And it's no longer... Well, you know. As Naruto looked down, he was completely naked, and that problem with guys in the morning was fully erect. Oh my god, said Naruto. What's happening, Mei said, as she awoke from the rockets. Mei, don't look! However, it was too late as she screamed. Her being so close to him, she was right there to view everything as she collapsed, with a red face. We're this, one of the men said. That is definitely not something that we want to see. First waking up in the morning as he threw Naruto some spare clothing. As the others laugh. I wouldn't laugh if I were you Shin. His is way bigger than yours. After all, by a good margin at least, Olaf said. As Shin grew red faced in embarrassment and anger. Shut up you shitty midget he said. As all the others start to laugh once again. Meanwhile, on the other side of the planet. In the remote lunar islands deep away. In the underground temple, a giant statue, a four-armed monster had crumbled away into dust, making the men that entered the temple grow wide eye in shock as they were unable to understand what happened in front of their very eyes. 
This is not good. Verador and Malvis were the only two that we were able to locate. And now they're both lost to us. Lord Joseph will not be happy to hear about this. And we still don't have any idea about the location of the other. Colossus, the head of the group said as he grimaced in horror. What happened? A nearby soldier asked in confusion. The gems, you idiot. It's all about the cores of the Colossus. We need those gems for our king plan to succeed. And while that whole dragon evaporated from its prison, here, just the core is gone, leaving behind a hollow statue for us to find. Someone else must be hunting down the cores. We must return and alert our king. We have a spy in our ranks, a traitor, he said, as he turned around to leave in blind fury. Yes, sir, the soldiers answered as one as they too march outside. Whoever have those gems will pay. No one can stop our king. No one! Unaware of all this happening, the two goblins kept on traveling with the merchants, learning all they could about this world, not knowing what was happening on the other side. Time skip. Not too far away from Nesteria Kingdom, hidden in the middle of the forest, located in the elfish forest, stood an imposing mountain. It seems like it has just dropped from the heavens, because there was no other in sight. Legend said that it was the only mountain remaining in the area, because back in the time, the place used to be a giant mountain range, and the colossal war leveled all of the others, leaving that one the only one standing after everything was finished. And in the core of that mountain, it marked the entrance to Ornelia City. The city was initially created for it to be a huge mining outpost. Concentric rings growing deeper and deeper the more they got underground. However, after a few centuries, it evolved into a full anonymous city and then into a kingdom once. All the tribes of elves and the newly named king of Ornelia signed an alliance, the first and last to date between humans and elves in Elrond's history resulted into the creation of the kingdom once the human and elfish territory unified together under one banner and now in the deepest part of the underground city stood a sturdy little fortress and inside at the moment there was a meeting between King Joseph and the newly named Imperial War Council and there was no good mood inside. You idiots! He slammed his fist down. He was angry. Do not let those fools ruin your day, husband. They're unworthy of it. His wife next to him sitting on her own throne. She was an elf with platinum blonde hair and long pointed ears. Her blue eyes glared down towards the one that angered her beloved. They may not be worthy of it, but... Their sheer incompetence is something I cannot ignore. Joseph said as he walked down, taking the axe that was secured on his back and slammed it down on the map. Malvis statue lacked the core and Veradora disappeared without a single trace. Two cores of the war in Trinity are now gone. How could you fail me? How could my men, men that we train with the best equipment, money and magic could afford, to become my elite, fail me. How he yelled out. As all of them flinch once again. Remember the elfish lore. With the elemental cores, you create the lock. With the warring trinity, you create the key. Without the cores of the lesser titans, all of the others are useless. And without the cores of the warring trinity, the ones from the elemental titans are just pieces of jewelry. We need all of them together for the plan to succeed. M my lord, one of the counselors said, after swallowing hard. Speak, Major Lurgen, and make it quick, Joseph said. What we are looking for to create our final weapon was supposed to be only a myth, a legend. The fact that we were able to track down the crypts where Verdora and Malvis were sealed in was a miracle in itself. We are still looking for the third member of the Trinity, Afrian, but we need time. The young man said as he nervously adjusted his glasses. 
Then find the beast. Find it and bring its core to me. Of, of course, sir. This is the very last error I will forgive. Then I will hang you and your man and replace you. What about our R&D, Joseph said, as he took some deep calming breath. Ah, the core we took from the elemental titan of fire is indeed a specimen, worth the legends. If only I had the other core as well, to study them. The old man at the opposite side of the first speaker said amuse. Explain, the king said. The magical ores that we can find in our own minds are the rarest of its kind. Yet... As with any other ore, it can only channel the user's mana to create a spell, and in the highest grade of Magi's case, it can slightly amplify the user's mana. However, the fire core that you gave me to study, it can create its own mana, and not only in an endless quality, however, it can also amplify the user magic a hundred times. If those two mana flows are properly mixed together, the old man said, with a chuckle. What? The counselors yelled as one. Having a magical catalyst that can create its own magic was unheard of. It was a reason why Joseph's face turned into a grin. Good. Very, very good. Any chance of reproducing it artificially? Our use of magi tech make us a force to be feared everywhere. However, if our creations can produce endless mana, then no one, absolutely no one will be able to stop us. The king said with a shaking fist. However, the scientist deflated at that, which made him frown as he looked down toward his feet. It's a great regret and shame for me to say, my lord. I fail in that regard. How come the other said, shock? I test it again and again, your majesty. I analyze everything. I dissected every man and woman that I experimented with in creating artificial force and I found nothing. The fire core cannot be copied and only one soldier can wield its force without going mad, exploding or being drained of their life force either. The doctor said, I see. And who is the soldier? King Joseph said. One of our aces of ace, the devil of the Rhine. R Rhine? A female counselor said in shock, The Rhine City Massacre, the battle where over 2,000 of our soldiers died in less than a day. Because of a joint ambush of our enemies, only one of us remained alive to return to Berency, once cutting her way through the advanced forces to meet our reinforcements, giving us the key to victory by telling us where and what to strike. Yes, exactly her. The Devil Child killed 62 and 32 assists in her first mission only, promoted to lieutenant for her job in Rhine, also known as Mithril and the Argent. I should have suspected. Prodigies like that are always eager to stand out, Joseph said. So you added the Fire Quarter standard, Monor Ore? No, Your Majesty. Just like with my previous test subjects, I was forced to create an artificial one as soon as a normal orb started to melt as soon as mana flew through it from the titan core. I call what I created for the lieutenant, Elenium type 95, because of the main component of the outer shell being made of pure Elenium. You use that super rare orb. Why? The woman next to him asks. It is the only material that can sustain the lieutenant, normal, mana levels and the fire core working together without an explosion. The 95 is not casual either. It is to remind me of the number of failures I had before this one worked the right way. That his majesty wanted. I have seen the test results and I am fine with this. Having this weapon of mass destruction is more than worth the expensive that. It went through to achieve it in my opinion. Yes, your majesty. Both the woman and scientist said. Very well. Anything else to add? The king asked. I do have some good news, my lord. A woman dressed in black robes appeared out of the shadows to kneel next to him. Talk. It seems like Leonis' daughter has escaped her loving daddy embrace. 
to go on an adventure outside of the capital. As of now, no one knows about this because everything is being kept on the wraps. The spy answered, <laughs> Very good. That monster loving fool has finally made a mistake that we can exploit. Brigadier General Lordedorf. Yes, my lord, an old man said as he stood to attention. Call our dear lieutenant. Tell her to drop everything that she's doing. She will be departing immediately to Devon for a solo mission. Tell her I want her to kidnap Leonis' daughter and bring her back here. Harm or not, it's not a problem. I just want that brat alive. Yes, sir, he said with a nod. Oh, and be sure to tell her to bring the recording orb with her as well. I want to see how the core works. On the field in a proper mission and battle, the king said. It will be done, he said, as he left the room immediately after. As for you others, tell those pests from the moon island not to slack off. I did not make an alliance with a bunch of islanders just to do all the job myself. Dismiss, Joseph said. Once he and his wife was alone, he sighed. How can you and I become gods if we have to work with those fools? I remember you that I have to watch my brother make the same mistakes while also being the king of the elves. Just be patient. We will have our loving world, she said. It was surprising how nice they act with each other. Despite the cruel wicked things they were willing to do with no shred of sympathy. Meanwhile, Lieutenant, a man asks as he enter a completely dark bedroom. What is it? A young voice asks back. The general needs to speak with you. The poor soldier said, as a red gem hanging from the girl's neck gave the room a chilling, frightening experience for him. I will meet him immediately, she said, with a nod. A new plot that you have, you damn bastard. A new trick for me to be your herald. She clenched her fists. On the outside, everything seemed calm, but on the inside, she wasn't happy, it seems. Luckily for her, there was someone else listening in to see how angry she was, and they start to plot countermeasures for Joseph's plan, and whoever she was angry with as well. Being X, someday, I will get my revenge, she said, with a snarl. Two days later, with Naruto and May, rode to Serena City. Olaf was in the middle, as he was at the front of the carriage, as Naruto was on the right, with me on the left. Are you sure that your people give me a chance to explain, said Naruto. Normally they will kill you the moment you take a step in the city borders. Me glanced over towards Naruto with war in her eyes. But lucky for you, my brother happened to know the leader very well. And if I explain beforehand, I am sure that they will at least give you the benefit of the doubt, Olaf said with a smile. Ah, thanks old man, said Naruto. As they rode the carriage, getting closer and closer, this will be his first time seeing an actual city in this world. Given the place that he grew up in, it was... Well, let's not talk about that. However, he wanted to see what it was all about. But, him being a goblin, as well as his partner with him. But at least he had someone that will give them the benefit of the doubt to at least talk and explain themselves as they made their way. But guys, we end up so right here. If you want to see next parts and do, like, subscribe, comment down below and turn on that bell notifications they posted. Remember share some of your friends and social media platform. And also guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs of the other channels. Yes, I need a four which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and smash that red subscribe button and become a part of the end making family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. So without further ado or wasting any more time, I'm out for now. See you guys soon. Peace guys.